verse number eight today. Come on, I, I'm telling you, that, uh, outstanding lesson this morning, Brother Price. It's time to believe the word of God today. Come on, it's time to believe the word of God today. I, I, I got about two or three of you. It's time to believe the word of God today. Come on, it's time to believe the word of God today. Acts chapter 6, verse 8. Coming from a man who was stoned to death. It says, and Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Today, I want to preach on the topic that says where faith takes our mountains. Where faith takes our mountains. You may be seated in this place. Amen. We hear today, and I, I, I just, I'm telling you, I, I'm, I'm not one of these cookie cup preachers, and we're going to do that. I, I just, I'm going to follow the Holy Ghost right now. Amen. We, we live in a generation right now, amen, where everything uh, has to be laid out, and every, we, we have to see this and this is going to happen before this can happen. But God exists in a realm, and, or, or, or God creates things in a realm where there is nothing, and then something comes out of nothing. Amen. God, it's true trying to remind the apostolic church just as he created the world out of nothing and he spoke the world into existence in the very beginning. Amen. God is going to speak some things into existence in your life if you will just believe him. The Bible says in Acts chapter 6 verse number 8, it says in Stephen, full of faith and power. I believe the apostolic church in these last days have got to have two principles in their life we have to be full of faith and we have to be full of come on we have to be full of faith and we have to be full of come on we're gonna say it again amen we have to be full of faith and full of come on amen the bible says the holy ghost is that power amen it gives us power over serpents it gives us power over disease it gives us power over anything the bible says in my name amen you shall cast out demons the bible is clearly telling us amen that we are given the greatest power we have an anointing that no other church has. And then we have a faith, a level of faith that no other church has. But you've got to understand, you have to grasp it. It's an individual thing. Amen. To Stephen being full of faith and of power. The Bible wants to remind us individually. Amen. The church is always full of faith and power. But God wants it to be upon the individual. So many times in our life we, we get sidetracked. I, I, I'm, I'm trying not, amen, to get ahead of the lesson here, amen. But our, our, our problems should never dictate our prayer life. Our problems should never lead our prayers. Come on, somebody. Amen. Our problems should never be what captivates us when we go to a prayer room. I tell you what should captivate us when we go to a prayer room is the presence of the almighty Jesus that fills all heaven and all earth. Amen. Heaven is a throne and earth is his footstool. But too many apostolics, amen, are captivated by the presence of their problems. We have to understand God wants us to realize who is bigger. Amen. We have a revelation of the mighty God in Christ. And a preacher said it like this. But it's time for us to get a revelation of the mighty God with inside of us. I believe we have the greatest power. The devil fears the power of the Holy Ghost. When someone is baptized in the name of Jesus and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, the devil comes after them. They're marked. He wants to destroy them. He wants to kill them. Amen. But God will always preserve his children. So many have lost faith. And so many has lost power. The Bible says, and I'm going to preach out of the same text Brother Josh preached out of last Sunday. Matthew chapter 21, verse number 20. And when the disciples saw it, 
they marveled at saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if ye have doubt, if ye are concerned, if you worry. Matthew 21, verse 21, says, if ye have, what does it say? Faith. And doubt some. It's, it's, it's okay to have a little bit, bit of doubt. We're human. God understands we're human. Come on, that's one of the biggest cop-outs I've, I've ever heard in the, in, in, the whole, in, in my entire life living for God. One of the biggest cop-outs. I'm human. God understands. He knows my weaknesses. I'm just, I mean, come on, get, don't stop using that excuse. God wants his children to be full of faith and full of power. Not to be full of doubt or worry or anxiety or fear or depression. Amen. Or Come on now. God is not wanting us to have faith and all these other attitudes. But if he can get an apostolic person, amen, to be full of faith and to be full of power, amen, there is not a mountain that can stand before a child of God, there is not a sickness that can defeat a child of God, why, amen, because all power was given to Jesus, Doubt not, you shall not only do this, which is done to the fig tree, but also you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and it shall be done. And all things, whatsoever ye ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. How many believes that faith is the substance? Come on, somebody. How, how, how many? You, you got to. That, that, that's the ingredient you got to have if you're going to have, have the right outcome. You just can't add any old additives in there and get the desired outcome. But faith is a necessary component. And doubt has to nowhere be near the table of the mixing of your miracle. Come on, somebody. Hey, man, God wants you to understand. Amen. It does not matter what an individual speaking to you. It don't matter what's coming out of their lips. Hey, man, it matters what comes out of God's lips. And it matters what comes out of your lips. Amen. God wants this child of God to speak faith. Amen. Come on. God's trying to wake us up and speak faith. I, I said this last Sunday. Why let a created voice, amen, detour what the voice of the creator wants to do in your life? I believe God. I'm crazy about it. I believe he can do anything. There's nothing my God cannot do. He can raise the dead. Amen. He can heal the sick. He can heal the lame. Amen. He can save the alcoholic. He can save the prostitute. There's nothing that my God cannot do. So I'm going to ask you a question today. Why do you sit there and have doubt? Why do you sit there and believe that God cannot do it? Faith. You should already be praising him like it already happened. You should already be worshiping like it already happened. Faith is not sitting down going, oh my God, I'll praise you when it happens. No, before it happens, the child of God begins, amen, to see in the realm of faith. God's trying to wake somebody up in this house here today. God's not concerned about your problem, but God is concerned about your trust and belief in who he is. Faith is a necessary component. Faith is the vehicle for your mountain. Come on now. Faith is the vehicle for your mountain. We live in a world right now. Brother Price was talking about, you call Uber. It's funny how they rename things. It's, 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 it's a taxi. But you can't go nowhere until you get into a vehicle and go there. I wanted to pick my children up 
But until I made my mind up that I was going to climb in the car and suffer through the traffic of the Cajon Pass and Interstate 10 all the way down to El Monte, amen, that's when I was able to see my kids pull into El Monte United Pentecostal Church in Nash. I had to get into a vehicle to get there. And God is telling us that faith is a vehicle for your mountain. You can either cry and weep and wail and travail over your mountain or you can have faith like any other sensible Christian apostolic child of God and say, you know what, mountain, I'm giving you a vehicle. Hey, Amen. You don't belong in front of me. You don't belong in my eyesight. I'm providing a vehicle to get out of my line of sight. Yeah. Doubt houses your mountain. Doubt houses it. He keeps it in front of you. That's why whenever I just can't praise God today, my mountain's so big. And you're worried about getting the right climbing gear, and getting the right, uh, uh, you know, there are some mountains to climb, but I'm telling you, not every mountain is meant for an apostolic to climb. Amen. Too many Christians are accepting their mountains instead of speaking to their mountains. Come on, somebody. We serve a God that is caught of the mountain, and God wants us to understand, and God wants us to speak to our mountain with authority. Where is your mountain today? And where do you want your mountain? Does your mountain define who you are? Evangelist Wright, she preached just a few, seems like a few weeks ago, who I identify as. Does your mountain define you? I'm asking you some questions here. I'm about to get to where God led me. Don't worry, I'll get there. But does your mountain define who you are? And does your mountain control your prayer life? God never intended your mountain to be perceived as the greatest in your life. And that went over like... God never intended your mountain to be perceived as the greatest in your life. Do you believe that you are complete just by having Jesus? Come on. Do you believe that God satisfies your every need? Do you believe that Jesus is, I I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. Come on. Do you believe that taste and see that the Lord is good? Come on, I'm going down through some different phrases and quotes and scriptures here that's been going around. I mean, it's so many times, amen, we, we, we get to, we see a mountain and it depletes us of everything of who we are and the God that is inside of us. God never intended a mountain to, 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 to deplete the God that is inside of you. God wants you to speak to the mountain and not let it change who you are, change your prayer life, change the way you approach situations, change. Amen. I'm here to tell you whether I'm sick of my body, amen, whether this or that goes on in my life, I'm going to tell you, amen, I have to make my mind up that Jesus, amen, has given me a reason to shout. He's given me a reason to praise him. He's given me a reason to be who I am today. God never intended your mountain to be perceived. There are a total of five oceans. They are the Arctic, Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, and Antarctic Ocean. Out of these five, there are three major oceans, the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Ocean. They account for 90% of the area covered by oceans. Water approximately covers approximately 70% of the world's surface yet only 2.5% of the earth's water is fresh and that's suitable for consumption and not only that but of the 2.5% more than two thirds is locked away in glaciers and not particularly able to be meet for growing demands of society by far the most abundant and available f- source of fresh water is underground and then supplies or wells well springs known as uh, uh, Aquifiers, uh, the, the, uh, the percentage of Earth's land, land service can be divided into different types. 20% covered by snow, 
water. I mean, 20% mountains, 20% dry land, and 30% good land that can be farmed. I mean, and 10% land that does not have any topsoil. I, I, I said all that to say this. Water covers 70% of the world's surface. Matthew chapter 21 says, If you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. If water covers approximately 70% of our world service, that means there is only a 30% a 30% chance or a, a 30% land mass total. That means your problems only have a 30% chance of hindering you. Come on, I'm mixing science, amen, with the word of God here. Amen, there's approximately 70% uh, of the entire earth that's covered by water. And only 30% is a land mass total. That gives you only a 30% chance that your mountain can even be a hindrance without God. That means that any time, it don't matter how many mountains are in front of you, there can only be a total of 30% of mountains that can be cast into 70% of water. And so many times we forget the vast place that God has given us that we can cast mountains into. And all we can see is a mountain in front of us. But we forget the 70% that God has provided a place that we can cast our mountain into. God is trying to wake the apostolic church in this last days. God has given us a vast deepness of his grace, of his mercy, of his blood. Amen. That we can cast mountains into. Oh, I'm not done yet. Preacher, you just don't understand my problem. Come on. Men, stop being effeminate. Right? Preacher, you just don't understand my problem. You don't understand your God. Man, I'm going to say that again. I just felt, man, I felt something get right in my stomach. Preacher, you don't understand my problem. I'm going to reply to that. You don't understand your God. If you really believe that God can do anything. If you believe that your God is all powerful, almighty, omnipresent, he's everywhere at one time. There's not a place that your mountain can captivate you. There's not a place that your mountain can subdue you. There's not a place. Why? Because God is everywhere at one time. The highest point on land is Mount Everest at 29,029 feet. And the deepest known part on the ocean, known, come on now, they, this is just known. They haven't really confirmed it, is the Mariana Trench, which is at 36,200 feet. That tells me, Brother Sato, amen, that right now the highest mountain that is above sea level, amen, the very depth of the ocean can consume the very highest highest mountain that this world has to offer and we have to understand amen there is no mountain that's high enough amen that can cause a child of God that is full of faith that is full of power that believes that God can do anything we all want great miracles we all want to amen do various things in the power of God but God designed us to be full of faith and full of power Oh, I'm not done. Sea level has risen with an average 10 to 25 centimeters of, over the past 100 years. And scientists expect this rate to increase. Sea levels will continue to rise even if, even if, even if, come on now, climate is stabilized. Because the ocean reacts slowly to changes. 10,000 years ago, the ocean level was about 110 meters lower than it is now. If all the world's ice melted, their oceans would rise 66 meters. Sea levels are constantly rising, reminding us, and this, man, I just hit me like a brick, 
reminding us every day, Brother Sato, that our mountains are getting smaller. Come on, somebody. Amen. Scientists is worried about, uh, amen, the rising of sea levels. But on a spiritual level, that's telling me, Sister Liz, that my problems every single day, even if they're not being removed at the present moment, every single day, centimeter by centimeter, amen, God is allowing that mountain to become smaller and smaller and smaller. Why? Amen. And the place where the mountain can be cast into is growing deeper and deeper and deeper deeper God is trying to wake the apostolic church in this last day to realize we have got to have faith we have got to have faith well I'm not done the earth's longest mountain range does not exist above sea level I want that to seek in. The earth's longest mountain range does not exist above sea level. The earth's longest mountain range is mid-ocean ridge, more than 50,000 kilometers in length, which winds around the globe from the Arctic Ocean to the Atlantic, skirting Africa, Asia, and Australia, and crossing the Pacific to the west coast of North America. It is four times longer than the Andes, Rockies, and Himalayas combined. And it is all below sea level. As I was sitting, standing up here in starting service, God began to take me back to that scripture. And there ain't no mountain that's long enough. Amen. That the very depths of the sea cannot consume. Amen. The longest mountain ever conquered by man was cast into the sea. Hallelujah. Come on. Do you think, amen, that it was... Why do you think mountains exist in the bottom of the ocean? Scientists are going to say, well, you know, the tectonic plates shifted and this happened. The mountains formed. I want to tell you why the mountains are there. There were some people who came along one day that got tired of mountains being in their life. And they said, you know, no, you know what, mountain? Be thou removed and be cast into the sea. I know I'm talking about a physical thing here, but I'm, talk, I'm bringing this over to a spiritual aspect here. There's got to be somebody full of faith and full of power that says, you know what? My mountain does not belong in front of me. It don't matter how high it is. It don't matter how long it is. There's a place that God has created the mountain to exist. And then it's in a place where it'll no longer hinder me. It is in a place, come on somebody, where it'll no longer hinder my family. God has designed a place for the mountains to be cast into that will never hinder you again. I wonder in this place, if you believe what I believe today, I wonder if this wakens your faith up here today. Amen. God has the greatest mountains already under the ocean. Matthew chapter 6, verse 30 says, Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Matthew 8, 23. And when he entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there rose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with waves. But he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he saith unto him, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? And he rebuked the winds. Matthew chapter 14 verse 27 but straightway Jesus spake unto them saying be of good cheer it is I be not afraid and Peter answered and said Lord if thou if it be thou bid me to come on the water and he said come and was Peter come out of down out of the ship he walked on the water to go to Jesus but when he saw the wind boisterous he was afraid and began to sink and he cried Lord save me and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O oh, thou of little faith. I ended with this scripture right here. I'm going to ask the musicians to come. Please. 
God gave Peter the ability to walk on the very place. That consumed mountains. He walked upon the sea. Thou say unto this mountain, be thou removed, it shall be cast into the. God gave Peter the ability. Y'all ain't grasping this. Preacher, you just don't understand. The doctor said this. My loved one said this, and this is going to happen. My kids are this way and that. God gave us the power and the ability to walk on a place that was never intended to walk, to be walked upon. The very place where our mountains are. thought of this I just clicked on my mind today you ever wondered why Peter began to sink I wonder sometimes brother say oh, they don't say this in the Bible this is just Daryl Scott's theology right here I'm just putting scriptures together you ever wonder the Bible says he looked at the waves and the wind and this boisterous around him. I wonder if he started looking down at the mountains that he had conquered in his life. And it came back to haunt him. He lost faith. He took his eyes off Jesus. And his mountain began to as he went down, his mountain to became started to become a mountain again. Once one is thrown into the sea, God never intends it to be a mountain in your life again. Ever. But as you sink, this is common sense right here. As you sink, what is cast into the sea starts to become greater than you are and becomes a mountain again. The Bible records that Stephen was full of faith and full of power. And the only way that Peter could walk on the water is if he had his eyes on Jesus. You see, in the realm where your mountain is being cast into the sea, you can't walk in that realm without Jesus why do you think so many people backslide and get afraid and fear capsizes them and mountains that mountains come up in their life again it, it, it's not because they don't think that God is great and God is big and God is wonderful come on now we all know amen that's why they first came to God but there came a point in their life where a mountain became a mountain again and the reason people backslide and the reason people lose faith and the reason people I mean, miracles cannot be done is because you cannot work in that realm unless you are full of power and full of faith you cannot walk on the very thing that we throw our mountains into unless we're full of power and full of faith God's dealing with some individuals right now I'm telling you God just I, I struggle, Sister Penrod, I have struggled all week long with today's message. All week long, I said, God, I can't get nothing. I even walked in the church this morning, just had a blank in my spirit. I couldn't get nothing. I got down here early, man. I, I'm telling you, I, I know everybody likes to get their little time in and do, do what they do. I'm telling you, my main concern is what God's going to do at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning when I get here. And I walked in here and I said, God, I don't have nothing. It got so bad, Sister Liz, I was going into my files of unpreached messages. 
Maybe, God, you're going to release something into my spirit then, God. No, when I step behind the pulpit this morning in open service, God began to speak to me about where mountains are and where mountains can be moved to. And that faith is a vehicle to move a mountain into a sea. And God will give us the ability to be able to walk if we're full of power and we're full of spirit. He gives us to be able, the ability to be able to walk, amen, upon the very on top of the very things. Come on. Noah got into a place. He was full of faith to surprise. He was full, amen, of grace. The Bible says that he did exactly what God asked him to do. And he built a ark on dry land. But then it began to rain, Brother Doherty. And it was an act of God that took Noah higher than any mountain range. He went above a mountain range. Many men have lost their lives over. All because he was full of power and he was full of faith. It, will, it takes an act of God to move a mountain. That's why faith, amen, is the vehicle that provides God to move in your life and you're able to speak to the mountain and it's move. I wonder if we could stand in this place here today. There's some individuals in this house. I'm, I'm here to tell you, amen, I, I'm not one of these... Uh, regular preachers that I, I, I've got to study this all week and this is only what I'm going to preach. I came in here with nothing. But I believe God had a word for us today. And I want to open up this altar. You know, usually, usually the preacher goes, come on, I want something fast, get the drums going, get the guitar going, get this going, we're going to shout and dance, and I'm telling you this I want to ask, is there somebody going through something today, a mountain in your life and you've tried speaking to this mountain but you don't have any faith it seems like you've lost power feel empty and that words are just meaningless now that I'm here to tell you I want to invite you to this altar this morning and I want you to ask God to forgive you of your come on now well, well I didn't do anything wrong forgive us of our faithlessness Come on, you have to realize you're wrong in order to get right. Ask God to forgive you of your faithlessness. Ask God to increase your faith and then begin to speak to your mountain. Ask God to restore you, get you full of faith, full of power, be filled with the Spirit, and then begin to speak in your, in this process, it, it, it could take five minutes, it could take ten minutes, it could take a half hour. I don't care how long it takes, but you don't have to leave here with the mountain before you today. I've given you scientific evidence that the highest mountain, amen, can still be consumed by the very depths that's known to mankind that means there's probably a deeper part and the longest mountain range is already beneath the ocean which touches four or five continents so I want to ask you how great is your God come on now don't say well preacher you're not going through I'm not no duh right don't, don't, don't get that way compare yourself to Jesus he was tempted and tried in all ways but yet knew no sin right that means exactly what you're going through Jesus already went through and conquered it I don't mean to be so frank and unfiltered about this but there's got to be a point where something's got to speak in you. someone's got to be able to speak in your life where you wake up amen so, you know I, I, I one of my kids, sometimes the only way I get through to one of my kids, Danny, is to make, make that kid mad. And the kid won't speak to me for like two or three hours after that. But the kid doesn't. And sometimes somebody has to make us mad. We're stubborn. 
And then after the anger goes away, reason sets in. I'm speaking into somebody's life right now. It's time to wake up. Time to get in gear. Come on, this mountain was not intended to be in front of you. God created a place for it to be. And that's the very place where Holy Ghost filled Christians can walk on. Come on now, full of faith, full of power. Come on, the mountain is no longer a mountain in my life. I want to open up this altar for somebody who's sick and tired of a mountain being a mountain. 